see what we got here. Oh, I, I couldn't see you there because, not because I'm trying to do my best Bliss Foster impersonation, but because I'm wearing shades in a dark room like a crazy person. Yeah, I got light all up in my face, but yeah. It, I mean, these shades are dope though because they're like a collaborative effort between Nigo and Jeans Eyewear. But we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about these later, but because yeah, this entire episode is about Nigo and as you can probably tell. All right, so let's get ourselves together. Nigo, his contributions to the landscape of street fashion often go forgotten. His accomplishments and his drive led him to not only creating one of the most popular street brands of all time, but setting the standard of street that we all know today. So today, we explore those contributions when we discuss how Nigo changed street fashion forever. I'm your boy, Reggie Casual, and this is, I mean, I mean, you know what it is. When Nigo started BAPE in 1993, he was already a pioneer. The protege of Hiroshi Fujiwara and the friend of Jun Takahashi is arguably one of the most influential Japanese fashion designers sans Rei Kabukubo and Yoji Yamamoto. Even Hiroshi Fujiwara, in a complex interview, admitted that Nigo and Jun had a far deeper impact in street fashion than him. And that's high praise come from the guy Nigo got his name from. However, Hiroshi might be right. Nigo's accomplishments are aplenty, most notably his former brand, Bape, but his less known are the standards he implemented while the forerunner of said brand. The first was the vertical retailing model for street brands that was usually reserved for companies with incredible brand recognition. But Bape challenged that. By 1998, Bape was selling at around 40 stores in Japan. But Nigo understood what happens to brands when they overextend themselves and become too accessible. They become less desirable. Nigo essentially scaled back Bape to its own stores, which he noticed equaled the same amount of sales from the 40 it sold at various third parties. It was then that Nigo implemented the second standard, a policy of hyper-exclusivity that made the brand incredibly hard to get, as in only 10% of product was made to meet demand. And in consumer-hungry Japan at the time, particularly when it comes to rare items, this was a huge boon. That strategy was quickly adopted by Japanese and Western brands alike that could maintain the model, which wasn't many outside of Undercover, Stussy, eventually Supreme, and Fragment. But Bape was so ahead of that curve that it was in large part responsible for classic streetwear drifting from skate punk to integrating fully into hip hop, outmaneuvering brands like Sean John, Fubu, Rockwear, Kalkanai, and more that, you might add, were specifically made for hip hop. Here was Bape, a Japanese brand no less, being worn by everyone from Notorious B.I.G. to acts in the post-millennium like Lil Wayne, Kanye, and Pharrell. Collabs, drops, unique packaging, limited editions, and even a luxe version of a brand, even ladies' versions of a major streetwear brand would follow all things Nigo did nearly 20 to 25 years ago when it wasn't really a thing for a street brand to do these things. Seriously, Yoon An, the co-creator of Ambush, was in charge of putting together the Bape women's line back in 2011 because Nigo asked her to do it. And now look where she is. Nigo was and is still a powerful force that despite being an avid hip hop fan, he also is a perfectionist and an archivist. He also became the ultimate tastemaker, hell bent on exactness and design. But as a student of the culture, his dedication to learning everything about his interests is lauded among everyone who knows him personally and who study him. He's one of the single reasons why hip hop became more popular in Japan. And with that, his cosign became gold. That's how powerful Nigo's brand was. Not Bape, the brand of himself. He became one of the first guys in street fashion that was as big as some of the acts on stage. Something those wanting to make brands even today dream of. It was Jacob the Jeweler that convinced Pharrell to meet Nigo. Because while Nigo became popular out west because of the likes of Pharrell or Kanye West, it was the reverse in Japan. Pharrell and Kanye were being co-signed by Nigo. 
and the partnerships, collabs, and business opportunities would present themselves in ways unimaginable. Whether via music, DJing, collaborations with Bapestas like that with Cause and Kanye, or with full-on brands like Billionaire Boys Club and Ice Cream that he started with Pharrell in 2005. Without Nego, we have no skating or Toby Feltwell, which means no Cav Amp. By and large, Yoon An got her start with Bape, so no ambush. No outrageous collabs, no shark hoodie, no Bapesta, no Wonderwall being studied by interior designers worldwide. No none of that. And even the drop model, that wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Nego who did it who took street and made it virtually on par with luxury, with almost no regret. But despite selling vape in 2011 and leaving in 2013, its presence was strong enough to become a staple in street fashion. But it's not just vape fans. The industry respects Nigo as a legend. Don C calls Nigo the god of this street fashion game, wishing he can build his brand as efficient as Nigo using the vertical retailing model. Futura lauds Nigo for being so forward, putting shirts in spray cans when nobody had even thought of the idea at all. It seems simple today as a thought, but as Futura puts it, he had never even considered that at the time, and it quickly prompted him to reimagine how he approached his work. And even Jacob the jeweler, again, was amazed by Nigo's attention to detail, his thoughtfulness, and tireless pursuit of perfection, prompting Jacob to tell people like Pharrell about him, which led to one of the most iconic relationships in street fashion ever. It was Nigo who started the popularity of the parody sneaker with the Bapesta because they made that shoe the official shoe of Bape. Sure, there were other people making their own customs, but Nico's take on the Uptown or Air Force One became one of the most sought after sneakers of all time, despite being universally panned as fake when it first released. The influence of that sneaker alone prompted Nike to make a range of patented leather Uptowns in 2006, and rare babesters still demand a hefty price tag. And the crazy collabs you see today? That's following the Nego model through and through. And as he's grown and gotten older, his bigger projects speak for themselves. From heading up Uniqlo UT in 2014, and listing the talents from the likes of Cause, Pharrell, Keith Haring, and Verdi, among others. From his Negold collection by United Arrows, hosting a show, Negold and I, on MTV Japan, to his most current partnership with Jeans Eyewear, the Japanese eyewear company that your boy was so graciously gifted some frames. Let's take those out. But even these go to showcase that the ethos of Nigo is insane. Going under the name Jeans and Sun, the partnership is more than just a clap. It's a full release under the direction of Nigo himself. The name deriving itself from the fact that these frames and eyewear are not for any particular occasion, but for anyone under the sun or in a studio. It doesn't matter where, it's for anybody. But because Nigo can't have anything, he had to launch an entire collection and more collections under that. The launch collection, the new standard, essential, pop, modern, sport and active collections all speak to various lifestyles with some frames. So Nigo has paved the way and been an inspiration perfecting the model and trajectory of anybody who wants to get involved in this game, even more than James Jebbia of Supreme because Nigo is unmistakably a part of the culture. He lives and breathes it but he also goes the extra mile. He's respected from every angle for never changing his attitude, only maturing it, which is why his way has been the gold standard of street fashion trajectory for nearly 30 years. And he still continues to kill it. In 2018, he helped Nauto of J Soul Brothers establish Studio 7 with a collab that sold out in days. His collaboration with up-and-comer Verdi, no longer an up-and-comer, was sold out in minutes. In 2019, Nigo enlisted the help of Sotheby's to auction off some of his famed collection, only to have his Cause painting, the Cause album, that was finished in 2005, shatter records selling for approximately $14.8 million USD, making the auction a huge success off of that painting alone. And in 2020, Virgil Abloh enlisted his help to design a capsule for Louis Vuitton in a collaboration with Human Made. And now, in 2021, Jeans Eyewear. 
under the Jeans and Sons name. And as an extension of that, Jeans and Jeans and Sons offer all of you watching right now free tenant lenses with any frame purchase, including those from the Jeans and Sons collections, from solids to gradients, as well as prescriptions. And you can use Jeans virtual try on. This isn't virtual, but it's it's close to that. To see how they look on your face before you purchase. So they got that on the website. Oh, and why not? I'm gonna throw you guys $15 off with a purchase from our promo code in the description. But other than that, what's your take on Nigo and his influence? I'm gonna influence myself to take these off, it's really dark. Let your thoughts be known in the comments, but don't forget to check out Jeans and Sons in the description below. And if you want more content, fashion discussion on our private Discord, or even if you wanna start your own fashion brand and you want some kind of mentorship, some classes, kick it with us on Patreon. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy, and keep it casual. And I'll see you guys in a minute.